How long have you been preparing this particular store for? Barry hopes for the best, but is preparing for the worst. Storing fuel and water seems simple, right? Wrong. It's a minefield of potential errors that could compromise your survival. Imagine you're in a crisis situation, desperately thirsty, and you reach for your stored water supply. You take a big gulp, only to taste something off. The scenario isn't just unpleasant, it could be life-threatening. The first critical mistake many preppers make is using non-food grade containers for water storage. You might be thinking, what's the big deal? Water is water, right? Wrong. The container you choose can make the difference between safe, life-sustaining water and a toxic cocktail that could make you seriously ill when you need your health the most. Here's the problem. Non-food grade containers can leach harmful chemicals into your water over time. These chemicals might not be noticeable by taste or smell, but they can cause severe health issues, especially in a situation where medical help might be scarce. Think about it. Those old milk jugs or soda bottles you've been saving? They're not designed for long-term water storage and can break down over time, contaminating your precious water supply. But it's not just about avoiding the wrong containers. It's crucial to choose the right ones. Food-grade containers are specifically designed to store consumables safely over extended periods. They're made from materials that won't degrade or leach harmful substances into your water. So, what should you look for? Opt for containers made from food-grade polyethylene plastics. These are typically labeled with recycling numbers 1, 2, or 4. But here's a key point. Make sure they're opaque. Why? Because light exposure can promote microbial growth in your water potentially turning your life-saving supply into a breeding ground for harmful bacteria. Now you might be wondering about glass containers. While they can be safe, they come with their own set of challenges. They're heavy, breakable, and need to be handled with extra care. If you do use glass, ensure it has never stored non-food substances and sterilize it thoroughly before use. Speaking of sterilization, this is a crucial step many preppers overlook. Even brand new containers need to be properly cleaned and sterilized before use. A simple rinse isn't enough. You need to eliminate any potential contaminants that could compromise your water supply. Here's a sobering quote from our research. You can't just put some tap water into old milk jugs. It won't be safe to drink exactly when you need it most. It can and will become toxic. This underscores the importance of proper container selection and preparation. So, what's the solution? Here are some practical tips to ensure your water storage is safe and effective. 1. Choose new, food-grade containers specifically designed for long-term water storage. 2. Opt for opaque containers to prevent light exposure. 3. Ensure containers can be tightly sealed to prevent contamination from dust, insects, and microorganisms. 4. Before use, sterilize your containers. A bleach solution, rinse, or boiling for heat-resistant containers are effective methods. 5. Avoid any containers that previously held non-food items, regardless of how well you clean them. Remember, the best kind of containers to use for your water storage are ones that are brand new, can be tightly sealed, and are made from food-grade materials. This simple guideline can save you from a potential disaster. You might be tempted to reuse containers you already have thinking you're being resourceful. Consider this, if you have ever tried to rinse containers like these out, you know that no matter how much you wash it, there is always a lingering odor from what was previously in it. Now that we've covered the dangers of using improper containers, let's move on to another critical mistake that could leave you high and dry when you need your supplies most. Mistake number two, failing to rotate your water and fuel supplies regularly. You might think that once you've stored your water and fuel, you can forget about them until an emergency strikes. Unfortunately, this couldn't be further from the truth. Both water and fuel have a limited shelf life, and neglecting to rotate them could mean the difference between having life-saving resources and a useless stockpile. Let's start with water. You might be surprised to learn that even properly stored water can become a breeding ground for harmful microorganisms over time. Bacteria, algae, and other microscopic nasties can turn your clean water into a potential health hazard. This is especially true if your storage containers aren't completely airtight or if they're exposed to light. But what about fuel? Surely that lasts forever, right? Wrong. 
Fuel degrades over time, and using old fuel can seriously impact the performance of your vehicles and generators when you need them most. Gasoline, diesel, and even propane can break down, leading to engine problems, reduced efficiency, and in some cases, complete failure of your equipment. So how often should you be rotating your supplies? For water, a good rule of thumb is to replace your stored water every six months. This ensures that you always have a fresh, safe supply on hand. As for fuel, it's a bit more complicated. Gasoline typically has a shelf life of about three to six months, while diesel can last up to a year if stored properly. Propane, on the other hand, can last indefinitely if the container remains intact. Now you might be thinking, that's a lot of water and fuel to go through twice a year. But don't worry, there's a simple solution that won't break the bank or waste your resources. It's called the FIFO method. First in, first out. Here's how it works. 1. Label all your containers with the date you filled them. 2. When it's time to rotate, use the oldest supplies first in your day-to-day -day life. 3. Refill your storage with fresh supplies. This way you're constantly cycling through your stockpile without wasting a drop. Use the water for your garden, washing your car, or even for drinking if it's still within its safe period. For fuel, simply use the oldest in your vehicles or lawn equipment before refilling your long-term storage. Remember, even with stabilizers, fuel has a limited shelf life. It's essential to rotate your fuel supply regularly, using the oldest fuel first and replacing it with fresh fuel. This simple practice can save you from a potentially disastrous situation where you find yourself with unusable resources in an emergency. But rotation isn't just about using and replacing, it's also about regular inspection. Set a reminder to check your storage area every few months. Look for signs of container degradation, leaks, or contamination. This proactive approach can help you catch potential problems before they become serious issues. You might be wondering, is all this really necessary? Can't I just treat my water or add stabilizers to my fuel and forget about it? While treatments and stabilizers can extend the shelf life of your supplies, they're not a permanent solution. As one expert puts it, water must be replaced. This is just a fact of emergency water. The same goes for fuel, even with additives. Now that we've covered the importance of proper container selection and regular rotation, let's tackle another critical mistake that could render your carefully stored supplies useless when you need them most. Mistake number three. Environmental Exposure Errors You might think you've done everything right. You've got the perfect containers. You're rotating your supplies like clockwork. But have you considered where you're storing them? The environment in which you keep your water and fuel can make or break your preparedness efforts. Let's start with the biggest culprits. Heat, light, and moisture. These three factors can wreak havoc on your stored supplies, compromising their quality and safety faster than you might realize. Heat accelerates the degradation of both water and fuel. For water, warm temperatures can encourage the growth of harmful microorganisms, even in properly sealed containers. As for fuel, heat can cause it to break down more quickly, reducing its effectiveness and potentially damaging your equipment when you finally use it. Light is another silent enemy, especially for water storage. Exposure to sunlight can promote algae growth in your water containers, turning your life-saving supply into a green, unusable mess. And while fuel might seem less susceptible to light damage, prolonged exposure can still affect its quality over time. Moisture, particularly in the form of humidity, can be just as destructive. It can lead to rust on metal containers, potentially contaminating your supplies. For fuel storage, moisture can introduce water into your fuel which can cause serious problems in engines and generators. So, where should you be storing your supplies? The ideal location for both water and fuel is a cool, dry place away from direct sunlight. A basement or a windowless pantry can be perfect for water storage. These areas tend to maintain a more consistent temperature and are naturally shielded from light. For fuel, the requirements are a bit stricter. It should be stored in a well-ventilated area away from living spaces, and protected from extreme temperature fluctuations. A detached shed or garage can work well, provided it's not subject to excessive heat or cold. Now let's address a common misconception. Outdoor or garage storage is always safe. 
Many preppers make the mistake of storing their supplies in these areas without considering the environmental factors at play. Your garage might seem like a convenient spot, but unless it's climate controlled, it could be subjecting your supplies to temperature extremes that accelerate degradation. Outdoor storage is even riskier. Exposure to the elements can quickly compromise the integrity of your containers and the quality of your supplies. Remember, even if your containers are weatherproof, the constant temperature fluctuations between day and night can still affect what's inside. So what's the solution if you're short on ideal indoor storage space? Here are some practical tips to create optimal storage environments, even in limited areas. 1. Use insulation. If you must store in a garage or shed, consider insulating the storage area to minimize temperature fluctuations. 2. Create micro-environments. Use large insulated containers or coolers to create protected spaces for your supplies within less than ideal locations. 3. Monitor conditions. Invest in a simple thermometer and hygrometer to keep track of temperature and humidity in your storage area. 4. Use desiccants. For areas prone to humidity, add desiccant packets to your storage containers to absorb excess moisture. 5. Rotate more frequently. If you can't avoid less than ideal storage conditions, consider rotating your supplies more often to ensure quality. Remember, the goal is to create an environment that's as stable and controlled as possible. This might require some creativity and effort, but it's worth it to ensure your supplies remain viable when you need them most. Now that we've covered the importance of proper storage conditions, let's tackle another critical mistake that could leave you vulnerable when disaster strikes. Mistake number four, neglecting essential treatments for water purification and fuel stabilization. You might think that simply storing water and fuel is enough to keep you prepared, but without proper treatment, your carefully stockpiled resources could become useless or even dangerous when you need them most. Let's break this down, starting with water. Even if you've stored your water in food-grade containers and kept it in ideal conditions, it's not guaranteed to be safe for consumption over long periods. Microorganisms can still find their way into your water supply, potentially causing serious illness when you're already in a crisis situation. This is where water treatment methods come into play. Filtration and chemical purification are two essential techniques that can mean the difference between safe, drinkable water and a health hazard. Filtration removes physical contaminants, while chemical purification, typically using chlorine or iodine, kills harmful microorganisms. But here's the catch. Many preppers overlook the importance of these treatments or assume they can deal with it when the time comes. This is a dangerous gamble. In an emergency, you might not have the means or the time to properly treat your water. That's why it's crucial to incorporate these treatments into your storage plan from the beginning. Now let's talk about fuel stabilization. You might be wondering why fuel needs treatment at all. The truth is, fuel doesn't age well. Over time, it can break down, losing its effectiveness and potentially damaging your equipment. This is where fuel stabilizers come in. Fuel stabilizers are additives that help maintain the quality of stored fuel by preventing oxidation and chemical breakdown. They're essential for extending the shelf life of your fuel supplies, ensuring they'll be ready to power your generators, vehicles, or other equipment when you need them most. But here's a common mistake. Many people either forget to use stabilizers altogether or don't use them correctly. Simply adding a stabilizer to your fuel isn't a one and done solution. Need to use the right amount, mix it properly, and still rotate your fuel supply regularly. So, how do you ensure you're treating your water and fuel correctly? Let's break it down into actionable steps. Take these steps for proper water treatment. 1. Invest in a quality water filtration system. Look for one that removes not just sediment, but also harmful bacteria and parasites. 2. Keep a supply of water purification tablets or liquid chlorine bleach for chemical treatment. Remember, the general rule is to add 8 drops of 6% sodium hypochlorite per gallon of water. But be careful, overuse can lead to harmful levels of chlorine. 3. Consider multiple purification methods. Combining filtration with chemical treatment provides an extra layer of safety. Take these steps for proper fuel stabilization. 1. Choose a high-quality fuel stabilizer appropriate for the type of fuel you're storing. 
gasoline, diesel, etc. 2. Follow the manufacturer's instructions carefully for the correct ratio of stabilizer to fuel. 3. Mix the stabilizer thoroughly with the fuel before storage. 4. Even with stabilizers, remember to rotate your fuel supply regularly. Now here's a simple checklist to ensure water safety and fuel stability over time. 1. Treat all stored water with appropriate filtration and purification methods. 2. Add fuel stabilizer to all stored fuel immediately after purchase. 3. Mark the date of treatment on all containers. 4. Set reminders to check and retreat water every 6 months. 5. Rotate fuel supplies every 3 to 6 months for gasoline, up to 12 months for diesel. 6. Regularly inspect storage areas for signs of contamination or degradation. Take a moment to review your current storage practices. Are you making any of these mistakes? If so, now's the time to make changes. By following proper storage techniques, your water and fuel should last a very long time, giving you peace of mind and a better chance of survival when it matters most. If you haven't already, check out this video on screen now about the 17 items you can't be without in a disaster.